Hello, my name is Craig Ross from Nextjournal, and today we have something special. We're going to spend a few minutes looking at how easy it is for merchants using eMobile to also sell online with Nextjournal's e-commerce platform. If you're not currently aware, the eMobile POS system that you currently have includes integration with Nextjournal. This makes it super easy for your point of sale system to integrate into one of the most powerful e-commerce platforms available. How great would it be for you to have a single system to manage all of your orders regardless of how they were captured? With Nextjournal, you have a consolidated platform for your POS, phone, and e-commerce orders. Before we begin, let me mention that we'll be moving very fast. If you have questions, please enter them in the webinar interface. We'll have time at the end to go through them. So let's take a look. We're actually going to begin at something you're all most likely very familiar with, which is your e-mobile back office. In it, you'll now, in the import area, you'll see there's an external option. So here's where the magic happens. By turning on the external service, you simply enter in your uh, account information, your external account information, and that allows the systems to talk with each other. So product information, customer order information, order information can now flow. It's really as simple as just configuring this section. So now that we at least see how that how this works, we're going to now um, look at something else you're probably very familiar with, which is your e-mobile point of sale system. Now, while this is very familiar to you, I'm going to show you a new trick. So let's assume that uh, one of your best customers, in this case, Josh Ross, is in your store and he wants to buy something. And in this particular case, let's assume he wants a British open towel. So far, all very straightforward stuff. You selected the customer, you selected his product, but let's assume in this case, Josh is in a rush and uh, maybe he's hopping on a plane or something. He wants you to ship this to him. So in this case, we're gonna click on details. What's awesome is that you can get your real-time shipping rates right from your external system. So I simply click on this and it's gonna pull in whatever shipping cost calculation methods you use in external. In this case, we're going to show off uh, real-time FedEx integration. So instead of you trying to figure out what it's going to cost from a shipping perspective or just charging them a flat rate, which may or may not be accurate, you can pull up your actual shipping costs. And so um, this just makes it super, super simple. And so let's assume, um, in this case, Josh says, well, I really need it faster than home delivery. No problem, we'll choose second day air. Again, once, once again, it's the real time rate. So we're all set there. So now we're gonna check out. He doesn't need anything else. No thanks for more products. And then in this case, we're gonna assume he's paying with cash um, since I don't wanna really swipe a credit card for our demo. It's got exact change, process, that's done. Of course, we go to sync. I wanna send this up to eMobile and therefore to an external, and then I'm done. So while this part is all very straightforward, you're very used to using your, your e-mobile point of sale platform, it's now gonna be integrated and it's gonna give you new tricks like shipping, for example. So let's, let's stick with Josh and let's assume um, maybe it's a week later and maybe his wife's taken his towel and she's, she, she's she, it's hers. So he, in a sense, needs another one. So it would be logical in this point for Josh to go to your website. Maybe he can't get to your retail store. So assuming you have a website, for example, um, this is this fictitious golf retailer's first fairway, it's really, really simple to attach an external store to it. So while we're on the merchant's website and we're not in the external yet, we're gonna use this to demonstrate what an ideal shopping experience should look like and some of the tricks that you can offer to Josh in this case and to all of your customers. So um, first thing we show is on the website, you can get customers into your store any way you need to. For example, into a um, storefront, into a specific category. You can send them to specific products right in the search results. So however your customers like to shop from your website, you can make that simple. Let's start with accessories because we know Josh needs another towel in this case. So from this point forward, everything we're looking at is now an external. So we started with the e-mobile pieces of the equation, if you will. Now we're in the next journal piece. So this, at this point, we are in First Fairway's online store. Now, the one thing that may or may not be apparent to you, depending on your perspective, is that 
this is completely branded from a customer experience. I haven't gone anywhere. I've gone, I'm going to First Fairway's website. That's where I started. And that's where I'm shopping from. First Fairway's top navigations here. It's left navigations here. The footer, the unused background, the cascading style sheet information from the website. All those design elements carry into Nextjournal. And Nextjournal takes care of that for you so that your customers have the experience of going to your website and shopping at your website. They're not ending up in some type of template. Now, we know Josh wants to buy a towel in this case. So on the product page, he simply clicks Add to Cart. And assuming you want to have an external always on screen shopping cart, which is a huge advantage, he can see it fly right in. And that's really simple. Now, while he's here, he can also see that you're suggesting he buy some teas. And you know what? He loses them all the time. Yeah, I might as well get some. So it's great about an external. I can, as a shopper, chew products in your cart with only two clicks. I never have to click continue shopping like you have to with most other systems. You never have to click um, view cart. You can only see it. You never have to click to calculate for buying multiples of a product. So it's just a great shopping experience. Huge advantage of also having your always on screen cart is that you can use it as a marketing platform. For example, we can have dynamic cart messaging. Wait, you're close to getting free ground shipping. Well, everybody loves free shipping. And you know what? My wife already took one towel. There's a good chance she's going to take this other one anyway. I might as well get yet another towel. So now that I've done that, that dynamic cart messaging has gone away. And from a merchant perspective, this customer came here to buy a replacement towel. Now he's buying two and teas because of how you've marketed to this customer. So you can have a great shopping experience for your customer and have awesome marketing opportunities for you as a merchant. Let's take that concept a step further and uh, maybe look at some products that are a little more interesting. For example, uh, let's check out this Nike Sphere Dry Polo. Now there's a couple things happening here of interest. Um, number one, before we even look at the product, search engine optimization is absolutely critical to us. And, and more importantly, it's, it's absolutely critical to our clients. So for example, your product URLs, are super, super clean. It's the name of your store and the name of your product or the name of your store and the name of your category, depending on where the customer is. So super clean URLs that do include an identifier so that, for example, you change a product's name. Somebody who has the old URL will still be redirected to the right product. You can fully customize your title tags. Now, most people have no idea what a title tag is, and it's something that most customers don't pay attention to, but Google does. So your title tag is what shows up at the very top of the browser and in the tabs as well. And so these explain to Google what this page is all about. So by default, an external system will provide nice title tags for you, the name of your store and the name of your product, for example, but you can fully customize them. So if you know that customers search for, put in these search terms when they're looking for, for example, this shirt, you can optimize your title tags around them very simply. On, from a product um, shopping experience, um, attributes, things like size and color, really simple to handle in external. You can have an awesome image gallery here, no programming required. And what's really important about this is maybe, for example, uh, Halloween's coming up, let's get an orange shirt. When I make that selection here, the attribute selection changes as well. Well, that's really simple. Most systems don't link those two things together. So you have a scenario of the customer picks orange here, but they never change it here. Next thing you know, they're getting a black shirt sent to them and they're upset because they know they selected orange. And the merchant's like, well, we're not crediting, you know, this is a customer service problem now because you selected black. And in that scenario, both people would be right with an external. You don't have that scenario at all. Um, you can have, um, a, somebody can have multiple ship twos. So if your business sells gift type products, or B2B type products where your customers have multiple locations, you can handle multiple ship twos on a single order. So that's fantastic. You can also have the experience of shop online and pick up in your store. So of course, with the e-mobile um, integration, people buy stuff in your store and maybe if they want to ship, maybe not, but it all consolidates an external. But you can also do the, the inverse as well, where somebody's online and you want them, they have the ability to pick it up in your retail location. So you can really, between these two systems, you can really combine e-commerce and retail into just a single commerce experience for your customers. So it's super awesome. Underneath our add to cart area, um, we, have social, um, we have social sharing. 
So tell a friend um, functionality is built in. If you sell products, for example, um, home type products where somebody better check with their significant other to make sure this is what they want, that's built in or a B2B environment where, hey, I better make sure I'm buying what purchasing, you know, find the right product for my engineers. Um, you can do so very simply. Um, Twitter integrations here, Google Plus integration, Pinterest, all those tools are here. Plus, we have something super special, which is what we call Facebook Like and Save. Now, you might be thinking, what's the big deal, Craig? I see Facebook like buttons all over the internet. And you do. What we do is take it a step further, and we add what we call like and save functionality. Uh, we have invented this. As far as I know, nobody's copied us on this yet. And what this does is it allows you to offer an instant sharing discount. Like this product and get a $2 sharing discount. If I'm a customer, why wouldn't I like it? Of course, I want my discount. And now as a merchant, Everybody buying or almost everybody going to your store is going to send, going to have uh, a, you know, going to have backlinks from Facebook accompanying those orders. So you can really build a tremendous amount of backlinks to your store almost instantly by simply turning on this functionality. So really awesome. Our clients have had tremendous success with it from a marketing perspective. Underneath this area, we have our tab display. The description tab can have as little or as much content for you to describe to your customers what these products are all about and why they should buy them. What I absolutely love is that it's really simple to embed video. Um, these, these description fields are fully HTML formatable. So let's assume you have demonstration videos, commercial videos, maybe even video testimonials. You can embed them so easily. And this is really the next great big um, push from an e-commerce perspective. It's really leveraging video. So it's just awesome and it's simple. Reviews are built in. Peer reviews are fantastic for two reasons. One is it allows, of course, I mean, it's, it's in sense, common sense, products that are well-reviewed tend to convert better. Um, look at Amazon, for example. So we highly suggest merchants use reviews from that perspective. Also, reviews are really important from Google's perspective. Reviews are what Google calls a social signal, and Google is paying more and more attention to social signals. And so have, constantly having reviews added to your store and to your products in your store, are gonna, it's going to improve your results in Google. And so, um, so it's really two really important reasons for you to use reviews. Reviews are even wrapped in what's called a rich snippet, which is a specific coding so that the reviews are presented to Google specifically as it's looking. So it's the contents presented to Google in the exact format it's looking for. Finally, you can also allow customers to ask questions about your products if appropriate. So if you sell the type of products where, hey, there are FAQs or people have technical questions, it's just so simple for customers to ask those questions. And if it's a good question, you can display it and the response for everyone. So you can have an FAQ on the product level. So really simple. Finally, we also have related products. In this case, uh, labeled might we also suggest. We saw with the teeth. This is really helpful. And uh, we're actually going to revisit this in a moment. Final thing I want to show you from a marketing perspective is our clubs category. Within clubs, we have subcategories. You would expect that given the amount of clubs this uh, retailer would probably have. They want to make it simple for people to find what they're looking for. But what you can do in external is that you can market within your categories. Every category has a description field. So in this case, we're using the description field to highlight that these specific irons, these tireless irons are now in stock. You know, customer probably didn't even know that these existed yet, that they were available yet. So we are letting the customer know not only are they available, we've got them ready to go. So you can really market your customers within categories as well as an external. What do you want the customer to know about? What do you want them to do? Um, so it's really simple and it can really increase your conversions um, based off of your marketing um, messages. So in this case, we are going to look at irons. And the final thing I want to show you is this uh, Callaway X20 iron set. And what's really great about this product is it's a little more configurable than some of the others that we've looked at. For example, maybe I don't want a steel club. Maybe I want to upgrade to graphite. Instead of graphite having to be a separate product, I can do it right here. And by doing so, the price changes, and then I can add that to my cart. So cross-selling and upselling with in products is really simple and external. I don't have to send the customer to a separate graphite product. They're here. I lower, I get them to the product, if you will, with the lower price 
once they're here, they see, well, I can really upgrade to what I want for not that much more. Um, so you can really offer a great, great shopping experience that way. So now that we've got some products in our cart, let's check out. And once we do, you'll see that on top of our login screen, we have what we call the related product upsell overlay. Now, while that's a mouthful, you can see exactly what it does. Based off of what I have in my cart, it's going to suggest other products as well. So in this case, they seem to know, they know me well. I need more golf balls. Also, I lose them all the time. And in this case, these Callaways, they're on sale. What a great price. I can add it to the cart right from here. I don't even need to go to that product detail screen. So now as a marketer, I've got yet another product in this customer's cart. The customer came here just to buy a towel, but based off of how the shopping experience was oriented, they are leaving with, with a lot more stuff. So in this case, we're going to log in as a returning customer. In this case, the same um, Josh Ross that we wore in your retail store. And at this point, system recognizes us and welcomes us. Now, at this point, we've, we're getting home, free deli home delivery, price is right. But if something changed and I wanted to get overnight or second day, I could do so. And external also allows for preferred delivery date capabilities. So if your business is such, or maybe you sell perishable food products or gift type products where the customer wants it to arrive on a specific day, that's built right in, really simple. Um, of course, where to enter my payment info, any comments and special instructions I might have. And then right above our submit order button, we even have a uh, what we call a legal disclaimer. And a legal disclaimer um, can even have an I agree checkbox. So depending on what you sell, if someone has to agree to the specific terms, um, you can control for that very simply. So we're going to submit our order. And the system is going to thank us and it's going to allow us to share our order socially if we shall, if we so desire. So just a really clean, really simple shopping experience. The concept is somebody's going to your website and that's where they're buying from. And using the built-in marketing tools and social media tools, you can really, really increase the amount of orders that you get and the conversions that you get and the, really the, the average orders that you get. So that's the front end of Nextternal. And we move very, very fast. But if you get the concept of somebody's going to your website and man, is it simple, that's, that's what I want you to see right now. The last part I want to look at from a software perspective is the back end, what we call the order management system. So if you will, this is kind of the equivalent of eMobile's back office. From an external perspective, everybody in your organization would have access to your order management system, would have their own username and password. And there's seven different access levels. So you can control who can do and see what within the back end. Additionally, you get to pick where does somebody start. Personally, I like starting at my dashboard because this allows me to see at a glance what's going on with my whole online with my whole business what is my um for example what do my sales look like am i on track to meet my revenue or exceed my revenue targets how are my sales charting over time things like best customers best products where in the country am i selling to so in your case uh, especially if you're really starting from a, a retail store perspective and now are really expanding online it'd be pretty interesting to see how you're branching out in this case as this marketer, I might be really curious why you know, I'm strong on the coast of the United States, but the Midwest is really not as, I mean, there's really no action here. You know, something's not right. My marketing's not reaching those people. It's something I need to investigate. Um, things like how are my, what are people looking at in my store? What are they buying? I can see all that here. And what I really also like at the bottom is my search statistics. What are people searching for in my store? Are they searching for products I don't sell? If I see those type of searches, hey, it's time for me to start bringing new products online. I can see I have demand. So all of this is here at a glance. But what I really want to focus on for the last few minutes we have in here is our order section. So in orders, this is where all of your orders are going to live. So in this case, we have two Josh Ross orders here. The, the first one, 102609, was the order placed 
on, you know, in your retail location. Um, so since it was taken via, via e-mobile, as we know, it still needs to be shipped, but it's already paid. You know, you swipe the card in your retail store. This newest order, 102610, is the order that we just placed online. So let's talk about the online order first. We'll look at processing orders individually, and then we'll talk about batch processing. So let's assume I'm ready to ship this order. First off, when the order comes in using a compatible gateway, the order is authorized. So the funds are, in a sense, set aside for us. Now that we're ready to ship this order, I simply click on this green dollar sign icon. In this case, we're showing off the PayFlow Pro Gateway, but the other compatible gateways work the same way. And then I can see that I have indeed successfully captured the funds. What's really great about this credit card terminal is that there's a void button, a refund button, a couple other customer service issue buttons as well. So if I do have customer service issues, I can deal with them right here. I don't need to go to some other software like a gateway to deal with it. Now that we've been paid, at the bottom of the screen, I can create a packing slip if I need to. I can print an invoice if appropriate. But what I absolutely love is that I can print my shipping labels right here. So I'm gonna click on my shipping labels button. In this case, FedEx is available. If we're using UPS or uh, the Postal Service, um, it works exactly the same way. Page one asked me if I'm using the default shipping options. You probably always will, but if there was some type of uh, mistake in the warehouse, uh, for example, the package weight was way wrong, you could fix it. Page two, it's gonna ask me if I'm shipping today, but if I miss the driver, I can change the date. And now I hit create. And then FedEx is going to reply to us. And if I click on view slash print, here's my shipping label. I print it out. I stick it on the package. I'm all set. So now that I've printed my label, back in the order management system, I hit finish. Now this order is automatically now marked as shipped, as are the line items. The dates have automatically been put in. The tracking information's automatically been put in. And at this point, Josh has had a second email sent to him. Thank you for your order. It's been shipped. Here's your tracking info. So the merchant and the customer will always know what's going on with their order. Now, the final thing I want to tell you about order processing right now is that you can also batch process. So instead of going into each order individually, let's assume I've got 100 orders today or 1,000 orders today. In here, I can do all my credit card processing and all of my uh, fulfillment in one shot. And it's smart. It's not going to try to process the credit cards, for example, from your point of sale orders where you've already been paid. You just need to do the shipping. So, um, so literally, you can process a tremendous amount of orders with just a few clicks. Super clean, super fast and efficient. So that's what I wanted to show you from an external perspective, at least for today. Um, in the order section, you can take phone orders, so it's really great. Product management's a snap. Customer management, customer management is super simple. Things like advanced couponing, you can do all sorts of promotions, um, reviews, questions, which we talked about, um, the layout, which we take care of so that the store matches your website. It's all, it's all built in one really simple to use consolidated experience. So now, that, so now that we've gone through that, I mean, that was a really brief overview of Nextjournal, but you can really see that excels at allowing merchants to offer a branded shopping experience. It really provides awesome marketing and social media tools. Management is really, really simple and allows for powerful integrations with systems like eMobile. So having said that, let's take some questions. If you haven't done so and you have questions, please answer, enter them in the questions area in the interface. Um, the, the webinar, the go to webinar questions interface isn't great, so please ask away and I'll do my best to get to your questions. Um, the first question that I want to, in a sense, came pre, um, re pre prepared for is well, how much does this cost? So let me show you our pricing structure. So with Nextjournal, what's really fantastic is you pay for what you use. The way we determine usage is by sales that go through the system in a given month. So the most it would ever cost is 3%. It goes down to half a percent, half a percent depending on sales volume. So the more you do, you're in a sense rewarded with a smaller and smaller percentage. In a sense, it becomes cheaper as you use it more. Um, with that, there is a monthly minimum of $250, and there is a one-time setup fee of 1000 With that setup fee, we do that site sync where we're going to match the store to your website. And if you're a current 
um, go, uh, if you're a current e-mobile um, customer, we are offering a promotion where um, we will take $250 off that sign-up fee. So it uh, just makes it a little that much easier for you to get into an external. Next question, um, how do attributes on products work? Um, that's a kind of an open-ended question, but my guess is they're probably talking about um, that shirt that we looked at, for example. So let's go back to that, open up another tab. So in external, products can have, uh, have attributes. Um, something like a um, shirt is, is probably going to have two attributes. One would be size and one would be color. So once again, let's go back to this Nike Sphere Dry Polo. So in this case, two attributes, size and color. We've got nine different colors and we've got um, four different sizes. Every, or three different sizes, excuse me. Every attribute combination can have its own inventory level, as you would expect. It can even have its own pricing, like that club we looked at, where depending on what I choose, the price changes accordingly. The other piece of this is that within the um, admin area of your, of your um, e-mobile system, on your iPad, for example, you can group the SKUs together so that every size color combination isn't a different product in your point of sale system. It's one, and then you pick the size and color just like you would do online. So it makes a real simple shopping experience online and in person in that case. Um, next question. I would like to see a, a full demo. What, how, what do you suggest? Um, that's also a great question. If you go back to um, our, our website, let's do that. Um, if you put your mouse or a product on the menu bar at the top, Webinars is one of the options that we prevent, present. And we constantly have uh, webinars. We tend to have a webinar every Thursday. And typically every other week, we have a live demonstration webinar. So for example, the next one is coming up um, in two days um, this Halloween. So if you'd like to spend your Halloween with us and really understand how NextJournal works from the front end perspective and then from the management perspective, this is an excellent opportunity. If that doesn't fit into your schedule, then, for example, um, middle of November, we're having our next one. So we're constantly um, providing these, and people love them, and uh, they're fun and a great way for you to really learn. So at this point, I really would like to um, thank you for spending some time with us today. As you can see, eMobile's integration with Nextjournal opens up a world of new sales opportunities for merchants of all sizes. If you have more eMobile questions, please contact Matt Inan at eMobile. If you have questions about an external, I would really look forward to talking with you. Thank you for joining us today.